Hey everyone, it's Isomer. I'm back again for um, the next in our, my tutorial series. And basically this episode, we're going over the basics. So if you want to get the launch pad, get to the next episode. But if you want to learn how to script anything, stay in this episode. So yeah, if you, if you have a more advanced, skip along. If you're not advanced or it's the first time ever delving into this, then um, stay right here and I'll show you the basics. Okay, so basically... When you make an application in the KOS, Kerbal Operating System, um, it's all done in what's called KerboScript. And KerboScript doesn't really care about whether things are capitalized or lowercase, except for in some scenarios where you're comparing two things together. So let's say capital C-A-T is not lowercase C-A-T, because they're not, they're completely different. Or one, you know, or one equals... Kind of like one equals the word one, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So basically, um, the case doesn't matter on how you do things. Um, next, there are some basic commands. Uh, two that we'll be using is edit and run. Uh, edit obviously allows you to edit the file and run runs the file. Um, and then there's some other commands we'll get into later on. Um, but the first one we'll do is edit and it'll be let's say tutorial and one thing that you always need to do at the end of every line to kind of denote the end of the line for the system is to put a period so if I just do edit tutorial and push enter it'll say hey something's wrong there's an error where to line in basically so I will do an edit tutorial dot and then they'll say new file. Then it opens up this little window, kind of strange. Um, move out of the way. And it says tutorial on local volume. Now there's multiple volumes you can have it on. You can have an archive, you can have different things. You can name them, you can number them. Um, and basically that's where it's stored. Local volume is stored on this physical rocket. This rocket's operating system is, th this is the file on there. Um, it resets during any kind of crash, any kind of reload, or anything like that. This is temporary storage for the rocket. Um, so what I'm going to go into first is basically how to like print things out to the console, and um, we'll start off with a basic example of pretty much everyone's first application, Hello World. So basically your first line is going to be print Hello World. And as I said earlier, always put a dot at the end to wrap the line up. And then push save. Now say save changes to tutorial. That means changes are saved and ready to go. So if you do run, the run command, tutorial, and push, and put the dot again, and push enter, it'll say hello world, and then the program ended. So basically that is your first little script that is basic, you know, how to make it react to your input. Um, other things you can do um, include, let's say, hello world, and then you want to add some numbers together. So it, the way you get two strings together, let's say, well, let me backtrack a little bit. Let's say if you want to get hello and world kind of pushed together, like let's say you have two different kind of things you want to say, you put a plus. And that plus will then um, join those two like strings together. So you'll say, and I generally put a space there because you have to put a space there. Um, because if you think about it, if it's like this, hello and world are only, they're, they're the same exact amount of characters and there's no space between them. Even though there's a physical space here, the program doesn't see that because that's outside of the what they call string. So let's say if I do run tutorial it'll say hello world one word without actually making a space so you want to put a space somewhere in there you can either put it here you can do it there or you can do it here and just you know that'll make a space so run tutorial and there you go there's your space um let's say you want to you know let's say add a number the number is uh, 
and then as I said D plus and the number is plus so here you can do things like 4 so that's the number 4 even though it's not a string like this it'll still print out that that is 4 because it knows the value of that 4 also you can use the arrow keys to scroll through your previous um, commands you've run in the console so I'll just do that see and the number is 4 um, you can do things like let's say you want to add 4 plus 5 you can do it this way I generally put in brackets to separate it to get some separation between it this is basically even if you ever had a, a math course um, basically parentheses are always done first so you don't get something like the number is 4 5 You just put parentheses around it, and this will be done first, and then it'll pass it to the next thing, the next plus sign. So I'll go to that, and do run tutorial. It says the number is 9, because it just added 4 plus 5. And you can do that with multiplication, dividing, um, addition, subtraction. There's some other math commands that we might get into a little bit later. Um, get everything's down, actually not everything, most of the documentation is down uh, in the annotation below or the description. Um, there's both the official documentation, which is incomplete, and there's the community wiki, which is incomplete as well. So you can kind of like pick and choose from both of those to get what you really want to do. Now, printing out numbers is all well and good. How do we get useful information? Well, there is these pre-set up words um, that the system knows what they are. Things like, let's say, the moon, or the moon. The game knows what the moon is, or not the game, but Kerbal, the Kerbal, Kerbo script knows what mun is. Now, mun by itself doesn't mean much. Okay, it knows it's the mun. What about the mun? Well, let's get the uh, let's get the mun's periapsis. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's case sensitive, so I can do peri abscess. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, but there you go. So let's say you want to know the mun's peri abscess is, and the mun's peri abscess. Um, separation to tell that hey I want this information uh, from the mun is a semicolon so you can push save and say save changes run tutorial and it'll say the mun's periapsis is one one four zero 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 so basically in meters that's how far the mun is away from Kerbin and its orbit so you can do things like um, with the mun, with any kind of like thing. So if I want the, if I want the suns. Uh, actually, let's see. Is it suns? Uh, what was it? I can't remember what the suns name of the game was, but I know Kerbin. Let's get Kerbin's periapsis. So we can push save, and it'll tell me tell me the the Kerbin's periapsis around the sun. You can also do this thing, do this with things like your ship. So we can do ship, and let's say we want the velocity of the ship, which right now should be zero since it's on the surface. Um, now, since there's two different types of velocity, surface and orbital, um, you'll have to again tell it what to choose from from velocity. So again, no semicolon and do surface. And that'll tell you the surface velocity of your ship. So save it, run it, and as you can see, it tells me the velocity of it. This is, this is what's called a velocity vector. So it's a little bit um, different than what pe people are used to. Uh, basically, this is a group of three numbers that 
uh, describe on what plane it is moving. So again, you have x, y, and z axes. If you remember any kind of like geometry, and it tells you which way it is moving. The first set of numbers is x. The second set of numbers is y, and the last number set of numbers is z. So I can kind of give you how the ship's moving in space. Or, well, not in space, but in the physical space around it. And I think that's, we'll wrap it up for this one. Um, next episode, we'll get this thing off the launch pad. We'll get it, you know, launched up and possibly add some parachutes and all that kind of fun stuff. And um, see if we can get this thing to launch and make it back to Kerbin safely. All right, until next time, this is Isomer signing out.